What's up, ladies and gentlemen? You're now watching Kinetic Outcome, and we are now with Paula, who does <laughs> videography. Yeah. And yeah, introduction of yourself. Well, good afternoon, good morning, good evening to the viewers. I'm Paula, Filipina. I run a video production company in Hong Kong. It's called VAS Media, V-A-S. It stands for uh, Venus Across the Sun. Mm. And it's a pandemic-born company that I run uh, right now. Uh, we are on, I think, six months now. And I must say business is doing great. Uh, Pandemic-wise, I mean, it's a, it's a gift. Video is becoming more and more popular in, uh, in terms of the needs of every businesses here so i'm really really excited and happy okay now we go deeper to the introduction yeah where you were born how did you get here okay. your story um if you want to go in depth to the part where you studied mm -hmm. then next step next step uh, yeah whichever be comfortable okay okay so originally from philippines i studied uh, media communications mm. and then that that uh, really put myself into the filmmaking industry and that like I discovered my passion in filmmaking and editing but I got an opportunity to work in Macau uh, I worked in in a casino for seven years that pushed back my passion in filmmaking because I thought you know that really I mean, sometimes in life, you get caught up with, with nice things. And then, I mean, money-wise, it's a good pay in Macau. But I got, I, got, uh, I got caught up. And then I thought, well, you know, is this really want to... I, I really want to do this for the rest of my life. Like, to be in casino working like it really pushed back my passion in filmmaking and then I thought you know no I'm gonna I'm gonna continue my my passion and then I'm gonna start even though I'm gonna start over it's gonna be okay because I mean that's that's my passion in filmmaking yeah okay so living in Macau and then I met my husband and then he is the number one the number one person that really inspired me and encouraged me and motivate me to pursue my passion he said you know what do what you love uh, pursue your passion find a job in Hong Kong and then take it from there it doesn't matter if you go back to zero. You just have to believe in yourself. You know, just take take the necessary action to improve and take it from there. And then, um, so I quit my job in Macau. It took me a year and a half to decide because I mean, when I was in Macau and was there for seven years, I am already like, you know, I, I'm, I'm managing like a team. And then I thought, I have a good pay. This is the life already. Why would I go back? So it took me a year and a half to decide because there's a lot of things that I have to consider. And then... But I did it, quit my job, and then cross fingers to the universe. And then I found a job in, in Hong Kong in a video production. They promised a visa, a working visa, but it didn't turn out quite as expected. They, we struggle for the visa thing. And then so for 10 months, I don't have a visa. For Filipinos, it, our visa is only 14 days. 
for tourists. So I kept on going back and forth for 10 months in Hong Kong. So imagine 10 months of 14 days, you have to bus out of Hong Kong, then go where? Go to Macau, okay, come back again. And then what's next? Go back to Philippines, come back again. And then wh one, what's next again? Go, go to China, Shanghai. I mean, it was an exhausting journey because I don't know if it's going to work. I mean, I already quit my job, my high paying job in Macau. And then now what am I, what am I doing to my life? You know, it's, I don't know. I, I was, I was, uh, I feel stuck that time because I mean, what am I, what am I? I don't have a stable I mean I feel I feel I I'm I lose already because was it the best decision that I made I was yeah I question I questioned myself that time but then uh, my husband and I got married well it fixed the visa thing <laughs> so now I don't have to go uh, in and out of Hong Kong I applied again for another company, video production company. I spent uh, three, three years, three and a half years working for them. I've learned a lot in the process. I was, I was a newbie when I started there and then I've discovered life changing experiences and I'm so grateful and so glad that I fall into a great company that taught me you know technical skills I discovered that I have a skill in motion graphics you know graphic design I'm like ooh, I never thought about doing that aside from filmmaking and editing and then I thought I'm going to start my own business. I want to be on my own and I just did it. <laughs> I just, uh, my husband said, why don't you sign, sign up and register your business? You know, it's super easy. And then I said, no, it's not easy. Yeah, it's super easy. You're going to get it just the, the day after you're going to get approved. But what hold me back in, in doing that is the fear of like I'm gonna be on my own you know like but I went to <laughs> I went to re register my business and then after an hour I got I got my registration and here I am I have my vast media my baby <laughs> yeah congrats thanks and uh, you already answered two of the questions actually okay <laughs> your your challenges and your rewards throughout the process okay. so that's fine and then i want to go in depth though like when you first started you did the business registration mm -hmm. how were you able to get your first batch of clients okay that's a really really interesting and helpful information that i know everybody would love to hear how to get your clients yeah so how to get how did I get my, my first clients? Well, when I was with my previous company, I was already doing freelance work on the side. So my first clients were fitness coaches, people. But how did I get into that? The root of that is that the first start of pandemic, we don't have we don't have jobs in in our in our previous in my previous company so we were stuck at home doing nothing for me i feel i feel like i need to do something i don't really like just being stuck at home so i thought i grab my camera go to the park and film just something just make something right and then at that time i saw boxers coaches at the park you know doing their sessions and i thought you know what i'm gonna film them 
And then one coach noticed me filming them. Like, <laughs> I approach him and then, hey, uh, is it okay if I film you guys? Uh, I'm not gonna disturb your session, but I'm just gonna be on the back and film filming you. And then after that, after thir- 30 minutes, and then we exchange contacts. I told them, hey, you know, this is a, you know, you, I'll edit the video and send it to you. This is just for fun. Okay, cool. Sorry. That day, I edited the video and then I, I sent it to the boxer. He was so, was so happy with the video, how it turned out. And he passed it to his boss. The boss contacted me, wanted to hire me to make videos for their gym. I thought, oh my God, okay, this is, this is great. So I filmed uh, uh, the gym and then the gym owner introduced me to another one, to their friend. After that, it just, you know, it snowballed and never thought about it. My first clients are the fitness coaches, people. What did I learn from that? You have to reach out. You have to reach out to your, to the people that you wanted to work with. Make, make the first move. They're, they're not gonna, I mean, it, it's not, you have, you have to take action and reach out to people. I guess that's that's a that, that's a pro, the first step in getting clients, and also LinkedIn. Reach out to people, companies, the marketing personnel. So just introduce yourself. Yeah. Okay. That was cool. That, yeah. Just go out for fun, film a video. Now yeah. I have a client, and then more clients. Yes. Yeah. And. Also referrals. We ask for referrals for, you know, just intro- ask your current client to introduce you to other people who might benefit for your service. Yeah. And you do that after the end of a project? Yeah. I do that after the end of the project. And most of the time, you know what? You just have to nourish build relationships on your current client because it's more important to like take care of of your current client rather than having new clients and new clients new clients i mean i've been working i have clients that i've been working right now that i started working since last year so recurring clients is really important and yeah Okay. Sounds cool. Yeah. Cool. And the next question is what do you think so far how the market is with what you do? Because mm-hmm. of course you need to study your competitors as well, right? And what do you feel is missing or something that can be improved? Because everything is about consistent improvement, right? Mm-hmm. So what do I think about my competitors? And just the market in general and what's missing what do you think needs uh, to be added on because it's always improving yeah um the market here in hong kong i think it's very vast and it's not saturated actually i think hong kong Hong Kong market wise is a great environment. It has lot lots of opportunities because there's a lot of small businesses here. I mean small businesses or big businesses that need videos. I think it's a it's a good opportunity for in my industry to really like dive in into the filmmaking or making videos, brand videos, um, you know, how they, how to like improve their branding. What's missing in terms of 
filmmaking is that is that any part okay what's missing in the mar- the hong kong market is that what you anything okay <laughs> um well, based on your opinion what's missing i don't think there's missing in fact it's abundance of opportunity in hong kong and in terms of competitors having competitors is healthy in my industry because um, we grow from each other in fact if if you if you get to know your competitors you get to learn from them and they get to learn from you as well it's not that it's a competition no i don't think there's a i don't really think that it's a competition if i see somebody better than me they, they inspired me to and motivates me to keep keep going and make myself better you know what i mean yeah and there's a lot of opportunities and businesses we won't run out <laughs> of 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 clients so yeah i think having competitors are very healthy Okay. And of course, from experience, I guess it's always good to be friends with the competitors yeah. that are nice to you. Mm. Where you're really great friends and you can learn from each other. There's also ones that are not so good to be good in good connections with if that makes sense. Cuz there's people with integrity, there's people with not. Yeah. Yeah, have you met any on the not so good end. Hmm. I've met people. I think I w- I will just put it this way. I've met not so good, you know, ex- I had not so good experiences with people in the same industry. It's either they're going to take advantage of my time and my value and lowball you lowballed me they'll think that i'm incapable they won't uh they won't treat me as you know as nice as i thought i will think but i mean it's natural humans are like that i mean you have to go through and you have you meet people like that in general not only in in my industry i mean in in general walk in walks of your life you meet undesirable people but these people will teach you how to be professional and how to like it will teach you like pain and i think pain is healthy you get numb with that you get learn you 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 learn and you'll get value out of it i mean i'm talking in very generalized words but it will definitely teach you you'll grow out of it you know yeah and in the end yeah associate <laughs> yeah and you will identify the more people the the more experiences that you had with the undesirable people the more you will identify you know you you'll, you'll scan them oh this is mm, toxic ciao you know you're going to get wiser okay that's a great answer yeah and next is what advice or tips would you give to people who want to pursue what you have pursued. Mhm. Well, to start with in filmmaking, filmmaking is very time and energy consuming. So, first you have to know that you love filmmaking, editing and shooting because it takes so much of your time. And you have to know that it is your passion otherwise you'll get frustrated because it takes so much of your time and energy i think second one second advice is 
you got to know your value uh, in terms of in terms of your worth even if you're just starting it's okay if you don't know your value yet it, whenever you're just starting but it's a process you know um, yeah you have to test the waters trial and error and ask people ask professionals look for a mentor because video production industry filmmaking is not so friendly you know it's it's a it's it's not easy you will get lost and you will get frustrated because there's a lot of things that you need to learn and not only okay if you think that you know filming and editing is that it you are you gonna survive no you're not gonna survive you have to have a skill in running a business how to get that that skill well you have to ask questions you know look for professionals that done this before and then ask for their advice don't be afraid to show yourself or ask find a mentor yeah something like that so for the next question what do you feel makes your approach unique as you were talking about value earlier right mm -hmm. so like do you know who i am That's kind of <laughs> all right yeah i treat my my business as my my own self um, also when my approach to every project is very different I approach it technical and service-based what I mean about that is technical is that okay I get to learn what the client wants and I curate it with how I produce the stories in terms of pre-production, production, and post-production. That's the technical part. So it's uh, it's more of like client and me, ideas, jive in together. Second thing is service base. One thing that I learned in, when I was working in Macau in hospitality industry is service making sure that your clients are happy at the end also in the middle of the process so i approach my my uh, my projects on a timely manner i i uh, make sure that the the clients are updated and with the process i'm very open in terms of communicating with them i'm very blunt and straightforward and then i think communication is is the the key important thing i mean in terms of service and you have to build a client relationship it's not just like oh i shoot and edit done no it's more of like you know curating the whole process have their like the the experience with you working together yeah that's my approach yeah so i guess the main point that you were mentioning a lot is relationships mm -hmm. and that is true long-term relationship beats just looking and looking for new opportunities yes because it's going to be more on monetary based mm -hmm. yeah so there always has to be a balance yes yeah Okay. And for this next question, as you mentioned earlier, your husband was very supportive mm -hmm. of you, right? How did you deal with the negatives and the positives, especially those comments given to you making that leap where you jump down without your parachute open? Yeah. And you're going to quit your job. Yes. Like, I'm sure you did have a couple of people that would say, are you insane? Yes. So, oh, my gosh. Yeah. 
So how did I deal with negative negativities? Well, my husband is really helpful in like focus on your goal because I, I get distracted with things or people or what people said to me before. I think, it, and then it causes me stress. But stress is, is important. And I treat stress as an opportunity to grow. So whenever I'm stressed, and I'm, whenever a person come in and then like pushing me like to my limit, and then like, you know, it's a, ne it's a negative person, I, I, I approach it like, huh, okay, you are, you know, you are, you're making me, you're making me learn something here. Let me accept that and then learn from it. So I treat the negativities as an opportunity. And then I kind of like think about why it's happening to me and then why, why what's the cause of it but of course previously when when i'm still learning you know i i have moments like i cry why is this happening to me like is it, this is the end of the world like oh my god my friends are not supportive my you know, people that close to, that are close to me are not supporting me. But you'll you'll get those people, and but and then you just have to don't care. You have to focus on your goals. What about family? Family, that's a ooh, hard question. <laughs> they are not so on board at first because you know it's a it's a risk when i am about to quit my job and then my job in macau they're, they're not convinced but you know i get a lot of like questionable you know eyes or like hmm, i'm sure you're gonna fail i'm sure you're not gonna go or whatever are you like you're you're not you're not uh progressing something like that you you'll get a lot of those comments but then like i said before it's a it costs you stress but you just have to believe in yourself when you know something deep inside of you that you want to pursue your passion just don't care you, you hear it and then you know, get it out. Yeah, they're just like that. Like, oh, okay, bye. Mm. Yeah, okay. it was not easy in the first first time. Like, right? But like I said before, the more you interact, the more you encounter this type of people, the more you experience them. Then the more you get numb about the 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 feeling you'll get like oh this is another thing that i dealt in the past i know how to dealt with it then it's it's gonna be faster to recover and you know what to do mm. okay and in the end you got the results yeah so. you'll you learn during the process you'll grow you'll notice people you'll you the more you become i mean the more you learn the more you become professional so the last question for you though is uh is there anything else you're very excited about that you'd like to share or um, maybe for next year or end of this year yeah um i'm really excited how my business is going right now in terms of projects i'm starting to have more clients and now that i joined like two 
community groups of entrepreneurs, uh, business business community of Hong Kong and the women of Hong Kong. I I finally like starting to realize like being in a community is really healthy when you're in as an entrepreneur or as a like a uh, finance finance advisor or you know you have your circle of we call that support system so that's i'm really excited about what else i want to learn how to fly a drone <laughs> probably our cameraman will help me on that yeah so that's because that's the one that i struggle with and i'm scared i'm oh my god i'm scared to it's just like gives me uh. hit a bird Yeah, I crashed a drone once, and then it gave me so much fear. Drone phobia. Yeah, drone phobia. But my my dad said, "Try it again and crash it." No, yeah, we'll get you learn, you learn, and you'll get comfortable. So yeah, I think I'm gonna learn how to fly a drone this year. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, all the best to that. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, genetic <laughs> outcome, Hector Tamo. Paula Sexton. Thank you so much, Hector. Yeah. Pleasure's all mine. Our aim is to provide value. So, if you like what you watched, make sure you hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. I'm also a financial advisor based in Hong Kong, so feel free to check the description box for my details and email or DM. And if ever you need video and photography services, the phenomenal videos you're watching right now are filmed by Edry Mendoza. Lastly, if you love hip hop music, rap, R and B, singing, whichever that sounds amazing to your ears, because I always do a lot of experiments with it, feel free to drop by my channel at SCF Saint or Saint Crossfade. Appreciate you for being part of this episode, and more to come. Till next time.